there everybody, my name is Bruce and welcome to lesson 5 in this current series. In our previous lessons we have learned that certain materials are unable to conduct electric current. We call those insulators, while on the other hand there were certain materials that could conduct electric current and we call those conductors. In this lesson we will investigate how we can increase the amount of electric current that is flowing through a conductor. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to plan and carry out experiments using electric circuits and name the factors that affect the electric current through a wire. Our focus today is going to be on experimental design and analysis of results. Let me show you the apparatus that we will be working with. Here I have a circuit board with three torch cells, some connecting leads, an ammeter, and a thin piece of copper wire, which I've already connected into the circuit, some thicker copper wire, and a thin piece of nichrome wire. The task is to find out what affects the current that passes through the metal conductor. There are several possibilities here. I could use one torch cell as my electrical power supply, or two torch cells, or even three. I think that's a good way to begin our investigation. I will set up the circuit using one cell. So let me place one cell into the circuit and complete the connection, like that. I have chosen the number of cells as my independent variable. That means it's the variable that I can control. The current, which is going to depend on the number of cells, is known as the dependent variable. And I will measure the current using the ammeter. I must ensure that all conditions and variables remain the same. And this will ensure that I have a fair test. I will now close the switch to complete the circuit. Note that the ammeter reading is stabilizing at round about 4.2 amperes. So now let's enter that reading onto our table, 4,2 amperes. Notice that I've now put two cells into the electrical circuit. Let me once again close the circuit, and we notice that the ammeter reading has stabilized at about 6.2. So now let's write that in. For two cells, we have a current reading of 6,2 amperes. I've now put three cells into my electrical circuit. I close the switch and the reading is 8.2 amperes. Now let's tabulate that. Using three cells, our current reading is 8,2 amperes. Did you notice that the current increased as I increased the number of cells in the circuit? Can you see that the more cells we have in series, it means the greater the amount of electrical energy is provided and the current will increase. But will this relationship always be true? Are there other variables that could influence our results? Let us choose another type of material. And this time, I will choose a length of nichrome wire. We have to make sure that the length and thickness of the nichrome wire is the same as that of the copper. Otherwise, we will not have a fair test. Right, we are now repeating the experiment using the nichrome wire. There I have my one cell in my electrical circuit. I now close the switch and my ammeter is reading about 1 ampere. So let's record that. One cell is giving us a reading of 1 ampere. Now I have placed two cells into my electrical circuit. I close my switch and I get a reading of approximately 1,4 amperes. So back to our table, two cells gives us a reading of approximately 1,4 amperes. Here we have three cells in my electrical circuit, closing the switch, a reading of 2 amperes. So let's record that result. Three cells is giving us a reading of 2 amperes. Now let us compare the results we have just obtained for these two materials. Here I have tabulated the results for copper and nichrome onto a nice neat table for you. Can you see clearly that if we look at the current readings for copper and nichrome, for one cell, for two cells, and for three cells, that the copper allows a far greater current to pass through than the nichrome wire. These results show 
that the thin copper wire carries a much higher current than the thin nichrome wire. Both the thin copper and the thin nichrome wire had exactly the same length and diameter. The only difference between the first experiment and the second experiment was the type of material used. And we could see clearly that copper was able to conduct electrical current better than nichrome wire. We are now able to draw conclusions about the ability of copper and nichrome to conduct electrical current. We call this conductivity. Looking at these results, we can see that copper is a better conductor than nichrome. In other words, copper has a higher conductivity than nichrome wire. And we can generalize the statement by saying that the type of material affects its ability to conduct electrical current. We also notice that the greater the number of cells, the greater the electrical current produced. Can you see how much information can be obtained from a single set of results? We're now going to look at another variable, and I'm going to ask you this question. Does the thickness of the wire affect the results? I am now going to repeat this experiment, but instead of using thin copper wire in this gap over here, I've placed a much thicker piece of copper wire. I'm going to start by using one cell, and I'm going to close the switch, and we can see that our current reading is reading around about 5.8 amperes. So for our thicker copper wire using one cell, we have a reading of 5,8 amperes. Now I've placed my two cells into my electrical circuit, closing the switch, and we have a reading of about 7,8. So for two cells in series, we have a reading of approximately 7,8 amperes. Right, now we have three cells in series. I close the switch, and a reading that's gone just about off the scale, but approximates at 10 amperes. So for three cells in series, my current reading is 10 amperes. So let's now compare the results that we got for our thin copper wire compared to the results we've just obtained for our thick copper wire. Looking at the results of the two pieces of copper wire, we find that the thicker copper wire conducts a larger current than the thinner copper wire. So the diameter of the wire affects its ability to conduct electrical current. Now is there anything else we could change? to allow us to investigate the flow of electric current through a conductor. Well, what about changing the length of the conductor? If I kept the material the same, kept the same number of cells in the circuit, and kept the thickness of the conductor exactly the same as well, then we would have a fair test to investigate the changing length of the conducting material. Let's do the experiment. Here I have a one meter length of nichrome wire which has been folded up and placed onto this wooden board. On each end of the board, you will see some silver terminals. These silver terminals will allow us to adjust the length of the wire. The distance between each terminal is represented by 25 centimeters. So I can now adjust the length of the nichrome wire by 25 centimeters at a time. Here I've connected the nichrome wire to the one meter position. I will now close the switch, and we can see on our new scale on the ammeter that our reading is 0, 0,18 amperes. So if we go to our table with our length of nichrome wire at 1 meter, our current reading was 0, 0,18 amperes. I have now moved the connecting lead from the 1 meter position to the 0, 0,75 meter position. I will now close the switch and we can see that the ammeter is reading 0, 0,2 amperes. So for our length of nichrome wire at 0, 0,75 meters, our current read 0, 0,2 amperes. Right, I've now moved the lead to the 0, 0,5 meter position. I close the switch, and the ammeter is now reading 0, 0,3 amperes. So for our third reading of 0, 0,5 meters, my current was 0, 0,3 amperes. For my last reading, I've moved it to the 0, 0,25 meter position, closed the switch, and I can see my ammeter's reading approximately 0, 0,55 amperes. 
So for my last reading of 0 0.25 meters, my current reading is 0 0.55 amperes. So what can we conclude from these results? Can you see that as the length of nichrome wire gets smaller, that the current reading is actually increasing? The last factor that we need to mention that will influence the flow of electric current through a conductor is that of temperature. Now unfortunately, we do not have time in today's lesson to do that experiment. But perhaps you can ask your class teacher back at school to perform that experiment for you. Just to let you know that as temperature increases, you will find that the current passing through an electrical conductor will decrease. Let's now summarize the factors that affect the electric current through a conductor. The greater the number of cells, the greater the current through the conductor. Copper will conduct better than nichrome wire. The thicker the conductor or wire, the greater the current. The longer the length of the conductor, the smaller the current. And when temperature increases, the current will decrease. Designing and carrying out experiments is a very important part for you to learn to become a scientist. You will be assessed on your ability to design and carry out experiments. It will form part of your portfolio work for grade 10 and will become even more important when you collect evidence of your progress for your matric portfolio. And besides that, designing and carrying out your experiments can be a huge amount of fun, especially when the results can be very surprising. Thank you for joining me for this lesson and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Yeah.